little bit about um, Bless the Salinas Casey. He uh, was a Capuchin father and um, he struggled with his academics. So I don't know if anybody can identify, but um, we all have maybe some uh, catechists or children that may be needing that extra help. So he is a great um, soon to be saint to kind of invoke and help, um, help us with our mission. A little bit about me, um, Melissa Alvarez in the Office of Evangelization and Catechesis, uh, going on a little bit over a year and a half um, with the office. Um, as associate director, but before that, um, I uh, am from the University of Houston, graduated with a science degree, was going to go into optometry, which I love, but another eight more years is too long, so I did the education route out and uh, trained and worked in KDISD and then at uh, St. Elizabeth Anseen for a couple years. And that's where I met Sister Maria Gretti. We worked, it, she, she would work in the evenings, I would work during the day. And then, uh, and then I moved to uh, St. Jerome to be a, a early childhood center director there. And that's where uh, my kids are and growing the need. Um, now we're helping in the archdiocese. So that's a little bit about my background and, and education. And at, during the last 10 years, have uh, worked at the parishes in the catechist uh, field also with persons with disabilities, okay? And um, today's mission or objection in this session is um, to focus and explore classroom management strategies, right? So you're gonna leave here today with some skills that you will be able to implement into your um, catechist sessions, right? Or uh, schools. Uh, so your goal is to plan and to implement these strategies, right? Because we can take in information and learn all these great things in the la next three sessions, but we need to actually implement them and practice them, right? So that's the goal for today. Um, one of the things that um, in classroom management is to take an account that that's visible, right? If I had um, a whiteboard and you know we have our, our children in here I would have that objective up that way they know okay what's the purpose of today what am I gonna learn today uh, especially with the middle schoolers where they need investment they want to know why what the goal is why are we there or is it just you know we'll see um, so they, they they that's engaging for them to know um, so what is classroom management? Um, here's a picture of um, a summer program I, I worked in in DCATS, that's at Straight Jesuit. So in the summers, I love teaching so much that I would help um, the DCATS program. And they have a really great um, procedure of having group work, right? So here the goal is to do a biology or chemistry um, class. Um, but they're collaborating, right? And that's included in all the set, all every class, every session, they have to have some kind of group work. There's individual work, but there's also group work. So what is classroom management? Is where you, the instructor, catechist, or teacher, uh, you have a method of operating your classroom to help children succeed and learn. That, that's the definition, right? But what? how do we do that? How do we do classroom management? Well, you have to prep your room, right? A lot of uh, Catholic school teachers, you have those few days before the school that um, you have to prepare your room and everything is nice and neat. In catechists, we have two minutes before they come in, right? So you don't have a lot of time. But in your mind, you get to have your stuff ready, right? So if you carry a lot of the things uh, these are examples of manipulatives or helpful tools. If you are um, having a lesson, then you know, you're gonna have your material. And I know the sisters are really good at using um, the curriculum for um, the Good Shepherd, which has a lot of manipulatives, and that's amazing. I love that, 
that curriculum. These are tools that can help um, in your classroom for all children. I know you probably have seen them for uh, persons with disabilities, but uh, now in every classroom, there's 8% of kids that either have that hyperactivity or need some kind of sensory item. So it would be a good idea to have that in your classroom as like maybe an area or a section in your classroom, not as a toy, because we have to educate them on how to use them. And if they don't use it correctly, you can introduce it again, right? So these are some examples. And you also see a timer. Timer is really great for your kids with autism. So, but you know, we're, that's another session for disabilities. Right now we're gonna focus on classroom management. Well, the first strategy is procedures. What is a procedure, okay? Um, this is where you simply identify, uh, you're gonna identify what the children, what do you want the children to do when they come into the classroom? All right, do you, every, every time they come in, do they gather on the floor or do they go to their, um, to their desks? That is what a, a procedure is, like what do you want them to do? And here are some examples. Um, I've worked with so many teachers that they don't let them come in the classroom until they line up outside. That's one procedure, if you have the time to do that. Um, and these, these procedures, you wanna practice them the first couple of days, right? That first week, I know the Catholic Schools Office, they, they reserve the first couple of days for these procedures. A really good idea is to also have a warm up. Instead of a table that is blank, where there's opportunity to not stay in their, in their uh, chair or mingle around. If you don't want them to do that, you have them a warm up already. It doesn't have to be like the lesson, it could be something um, connected to it. So a warm up or a puzzle or something uh, that you want them to do while you're, while you're um, receiving the rest of the class because that's when those little transition times is when there's an opportunity for, for chaos, right? Or, or, um, and a lot of times we share these classrooms with the Catholic schools up where there's a lot of things and we don't want anything to happen to the material. That's a picture of, of the ECC when uh, at St. Jerome. And so at this early age, they start learning, okay, um, you know, I have my, my uh, plates, I'm gonna take it to the table. And so they learn that. But it's not about just telling them, we have to practice them and we have to model it and until they learn it. It doesn't take also just the first couple of days, there's gonna be some, some time in there. Okay, so, and, and what's another way, uh, another item? How are they allowed to go to the restroom? That's a big one because they're gonna ask you within that hour or hour and a half um, if they're gonna go to the restroom. And if you're in the middle of explaining something, do you want them to interrupt you or do they have a sign? Um, back when I, at the public schools, I've seen you know little signs, quiet signs, or so you teach them that. This is a sign, well, you, this is gonna tell me you wanna go to the restroom. While I'm talking, that doesn't interrupt. Of course, it's gonna to wanna to make everybody else wanna to go to the restroom, but at least you're not having a, a blurting out, right? That's one way. Um, is there a procedure for materials? Uh, do you want them to go, okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, or do they pass them out and they put them in their uh, area? Or um, when they have a, when they need a pencil, do they know where the pencils are? or are they allowed to get up and um, sharpen their pencil? Those, those are things to think about before the catechetical year starts to see what, what interferes with maybe your classroom management um, environment, right? So thinking about those. Well, you know, it's maybe during the lesson that they'll start it getting antsy. Well, um, we'll talk about another procedure is what else can you implement in there? 
Okay, so these are procedures that you can think about if you want them to do that, and then practicing it, okay? Practicing it is the big one. Not just saying, well, you know what the procedure is. No, we have to practice it. We have to walk outside, let's come inside. And if you're ever in a school and you see that where the kids are trying things like three, four times, they're learning. They're learning that because it's not, they're not gonna get it done with the first time until it's all, all done correctly. Um, okay, how do you want them to turn in progress? We did that. How will you take attendance? Uh, I know attendance can take uh, some time. Um, are they gonna raise their hand or by the end of the year, you already know their names. But in the beginning, um, do, the, do you have name tags or um, are you just going to take some time and later on learn their names? So those little tricks of um, knowing how you're gonna take attendance uh, can save you a lot of time. Okay, it could be that on the warm up, you already have their names and they just collect their name and you already know the ones that are left are absent. Done, you don't even have to um, worry about sitting there taking attendance. Attention grabbers are, there's gonna be times when the kids are working in groups and they're gonna be socializing and you have something to tell them so you need all their attention, right? How are you gonna get that attention? Because we don't want um, um, Ms. Melissa to be screaming to get their attention. We don't want, they're gonna hear you on the other side of the wall. So you have to introduce that procedure. And like we said earlier, some people have the quiet side. Some teachers do this, and then the kids know, all right kids, when I do this, that means you're going to quiet your mouth and your eyes are gonna turn to me. And uh, Sister Maria did some attention grabbers too, right? She did the clapping. And so there's so many. If you just go online and you get a, a creative one, you can do that. That's a way to get everyone's attention because they're going to engage. Just like y'all were in the large room and you had your little circles, you were talking, you were engaging, and now, you know, sister had to get your attention. So you do that, the, the same thing, you do it in your classroom, but without yelling, right? You wanna kindly and Christian-like get their attention. Well, what's your procedure? That's something to think about, okay? Um, what else is a procedure in your hour? Do you always start with prayer? Or do you always end with prayer? Having that schedule or um, those five bullet points on the board that helps them know, okay, well, we're gonna do this next. And all right, guys, they'll start helping you get everybody uh, ready for closing prayer. Or if they know what we're gonna do today, what is our goal? So knowing those procedures um, really helps. And then the biggest one is not just doing them the first week of the school, sticking to it, and then implementing it and practicing it. So the first days we're gonna practice, okay, well, you're gonna grab your name time, you're gonna sit down and do your warm up, okay? Until we, we get the, the hang of it, until we learn it. So practicing it is a big deal, not just telling them. So we have to actually do it and implement them, right? Strategy, strategy number two is routines. Kind of similar a little bit to procedures, but just a little different. These are routines that you're gonna do all the time, okay? So before the day, first class, you introduce them and you practice them. What are these? Repeatedly in your class. What the children can come to expect. Are they always are going to see your objective? They're going to look for it then if you're going to have that as a routine. Or does um, your routine include a uh, dismissal of giving them their homework or you talking to the parents? That's one thing I did with, um, when I was a catechist. I did um, special needs, so I had to talk to the parent um, before they were dismissed to give them how the day went, how, how did their child, um, what did we learn about that day, and what the homework is. So that every single time, that was a routine of mine. 
we, you don't dismiss. If you see your parent, you 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 wait and then you go. So that they knew that, um, and and we practiced it right until the end of the year. They knew whatever parent showed up doesn't mean they leave. They, it means we talk and then you're dismissed. So what did they do while they're waiting? Because they're eager to either start the lesson or to um, to um, leave. So they had that routine of uh, coming in and, and knowing that at the end of the day, uh, they talk to the teacher, right? They talk to the teacher and then they uh, then that's when they're dismissed. That's a routine. Think about what your routines are. Um, well, so you have your procedures, you have your um, routines, then you have to implement them and practice them, right? Once you have them up, you are, it, they're visible, we're gonna practice it. So like we said earlier, we're going to line up outside or you have to wait while you're talking to the parent or catechist um, or other catechist or any adult so they know that that's what you're going to do. But don't forget to catch them doing good. A lot of times we see red flags to where, oh, well, you know, this kid, it may be really active and, you know, more challenging. We want to catch that kid doing something good by the end of the day because we're going to talk to their parent and there has to be something good that they did, right? We don't want to just start focusing on the things that, um, the bad things that we catch them doing. Uh, because just think about that. If someone, well, if we work with somebody that just catches you doing bad things, then it's not very encouraging, right? So there has to be good things about that active kid. Like, is he a social? Is he like helping others? Or does he know what the procedure is the next time and lets you know sometimes it's, it gets creative for you to find what um what they're doing great and what what you can find them doing good so don't forget to do that um and uh our strategy strategy number four is expectations these are things that you expect uh to have in your classroom or in your uh catechist session what is it um so well you can have five tasks we want to shy away from rules because rules have like a, a sort of negative connotation, but maybe standards. These are expectations that you have. It could be, okay, we're gonna do, well, we don't fight. That would be like a, a deal breaker. You know, we're not going to allow fighting, right? Um, uh, so these, these expectations, we're introducing them along with your procedures, along with your, um, with your routines and your expectations of, all right, well, every week you're gonna have homework because we only see each other once a week for, for Sunday school, right? Um, so it could be that. Or um, every day you're going to, when you come in, I expect you to do your warm up. If you don't finish it, that's fine. You have time at the end of the day, right? When you're talking to your parent. So there has to be that expectation, but also that flexibility. Not like this is, you know, you have to finish this at this time. No, we have to also be Christ like and flexible on that, okay? Positive reinforcement. Reinforcement. We hear discipline a lot, uh, but we have to have an optimistic affirmation and always encouraging uh, the kiddos and the catechists that they're trying, they're doing a good job. And um, if, you, if you need to, reinforce a, um, an expectation, then we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna discuss it with the parent as well, and, um, and remind them what your expectations are, right? So it's just to be kind to friends, right? Or um, to, to be kind with um, our neighbors. So those, those expectations are, um, are important to discuss the first couple of days and then to always as well have them visible because we don't want to forget about them um, three four months later right um all right in classroom setup um matters so this setup right here is 
just classroom um, for adults, right? If we have children, so um, depending on how your day is going to go, you're either going to have, um, you know, group, uh, areas of groups, or you have um, different setups, right? If you have smaller children, then you probably um, get together in large group and then independent work. Or if you have a computer room, well, they're always going to be on the computer, right? So knowing how you're going to set up your, your classroom matters, but knowing how they get from the table to the floor or the table to the next, uh, um, the next routine is important. So that transition time, because a lot of times if we, um, we get, we, we start talking about, well, this, they're misbehaving or you've lost their attention. A lot of times it's during that transition. So thinking about how, what the procedure is, entering your classroom and how you want them to move from one thing to the next and talking about it. Um, and, and then practicing it. All right, well, you know, we're gonna be in the uh, floor for, for large group, and then when you do your independent work, you're gonna go to your desk. Well, how does that look like? You don't want them running, so we're gonna walk. So let's practice that. If we don't model it, if we don't practice it, then you can expect anything, right? So having those expectations um, and, and visible and having them practice it obviously is, is a, a great thing. Technology, that's for your older kids. Are you gonna allow that? Or are we going to um, discuss it later? Those, uh, those items are important from the start, right? Even with the parents involved. So middle school, are, are you gonna, are you gonna have them, are you gonna allow them to have it? All right, it's good to talk about that. All right, program, it should have your first day parent orientation. That's really important. I know at St. Jerome, St. Elizabeth, the first couple of days we had that with the kiddo and the parents there. Mm. So your expectations as a DRE, do we have any DREs here, directors? Okay, so you, you have your orientation, right, with the parents. Um, having them see those expectations visibly and we make them sign it, like you're agreeing to this, right? What are the, what is that? Like expectation of arriving on time, of not arriving late, of if they miss three days, what to expect if you're absent. So those kind of procedures of the program, right? And they also trickle into your classroom. What are your expectations in the classroom, right? So, um, and so like we said, these expectations are standards and are, and we can sometimes even, if you have, if you're a college school teacher, you can actually um, collaborate with your kiddos and um, come up with them together at some point. It, it's a whole lesson, but you can um, talk to them and get them involved in um, what those standards should look like. Right? Should we, and should we be kind to our friends? Yes. Well, what does that look like? Okay, I'm not going to hit my kid, my neighbor. Those that could be an idea for us. All right, and not more than five um, because then they won't know. Them. For adults, maybe ten because we have. Uh, what What are our standards as adults? Is anybody? We have ten. Anybody want to? Take a take um, um, a uh, an idea of what our standards are as uh, humans um, that God gave us. God gave us ten expectations. Yes. Yes. There you go. Those are our our standards, right? The ten commandments. We have to stick to those, and we teach the kids though those, right? So. We, we not only teach the doctrine, the commandments, but in order to keep our kids engaged, we have to have procedures and expectations in your classroom, right? So thank you. And Ms. Uh, Ms. Chow is uh, my kid's teacher at St. Jerome. So thank you, Ms. Chow, for participating. So um, 
those are examples of um, of the strategies. I wanted to also give you some opportunity to have lesson plans. I know Ms. Chow has that um, background of turning in lesson plans, right? As a teacher, uh, the more prepared you are, the better your class is going to go. Uh, because if we're, and, and, and I'm, I'm a, um, I'm also a catechist. I was a catechist, so there was plenty of times where you're running around and you know you're do, you're a volunteer, so you're going to um, do what the lesson is, but you're not prepared. So, but sticking to a lesson plan, kind of knowing what you're going to be teaching gets your day your day started and um thankfully we have sister maria caretti that has our curriculum right everybody familiar with the curriculum there's a class today about the curriculum which i encourage you to take because you don't have to do a lesson plan she made it for you you just have to implement it right so but having your lesson um and your template but also thinking about what, what procedures, what standards am I going to have and sticking to them. Can they change throughout the year? Sure. Um, you know, maybe some, some didn't work out and you don't have any behavior problems. You, you need other standards that you can come up with. So they can change, but um, you know, having that, that um, investment during in the beginning is crucial okay um and then considering when you're doing lesson plans that they are uh designed for many many different learning differences right because we we don't all learn the same some of us are more visual some of us are more auditory uh some of us and you can see these children in your classroom you can tell who's the athlete who loves uh, math um, and who is going to be an actress? You can you can tell you can tell. So having a variety of different um, um, crafts or different lesson plans is, is is ideal because if you do it the same every single time, it's going to get boring and they're gonna they're, they're not going to be engaged, right? So. Um, Considering the procedures, but also when you get into your lesson, having a craft. Um, I know with the uh, curriculum of the Good Shepherd, there's always manipulative, so it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And then, um, so what are the different? We we don't we're not going to get into the different learning uh, differences, but just keeping in mind that they're we're all wired differently. So. Um, oh, oh, oh. Good thing to have that music in there every now and then, testing it out, not so loud, but um, those different um, areas and learning differences. So now we've discussed several procedures, several routines, and I'm going to allow you now uh, to, to discuss between your, your group, your neighbor, about considering the, the, the strategies, what do you plan to do? Or what do you do already that works, that you can share with your catechist, your, your DRE or your neighbor? And, and then the other one is, um, what, ha what struggles have you had? Um, or, um, or anything you wanna discuss with your neighbor, okay? Think, think about, um, you know, we, we just gave you a lot of information and now is the time to process it and to discuss with your, your neighbor, right? We wanna give the, the children, the catechists in your classrooms that opportunity to talk, to, to process it, to implement it, and, and then that way they don't get in trouble. They don't, they're not on your bad list of talking or blurting out. They need time to to implement it, right? Okay, so let's take uh, about 10 minutes in your groups to talk about what you're gonna do. All right, um, we'll come back. And if one person out of your group can share a little bit about, you know, what highlights or what struggles 
because we always learn from struggles or from any kind of situation. So anybody want to share what y'all talked about? I know we get shy sometimes, so we don't want to pick on anybody, but or volunteer on what strategies you'll you'll try okay. to implement. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll do it. So we're talking what we just discussed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Khan. I'm from this Paris, and uh, you know, uh, this is my first time teaching ever. So I kind of like uh, get excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> uh, when 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 uh, when uh, when I'm gonna teach, you know, I think I'm gonna get nervous a little bit when I'm gonna teach. But what we just discussed about is the strategy of how how to making how making effective learning for students. So uh, these two people are, have been taught before, so they gave us uh, some experience. For example, how to deal with distracted students who like to play games, talk in the back. And their, uh, their strategy is uh, let them sit up in the front. So, so uh, it's making them pay more attention to the projector or the boards. And also, uh, you know, it's easier for, for you to uh, keep track of them and also make them busy, like uh, passing out a paper, pencil, or the book, so that you know they feel that they're in charge and important. So that way they get less, less distracted and talking to other students and learn more. And that's what we discussed about it. And this lady here, she taught at Lavan for, um, uh, for like four years. And I, I, I think what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I like what well, your strategy. Yeah. Talk about uh, some students just say that why you have to be here okay. already for one time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, for some student, uh, uh, when she taught that, they asked uh, they asked the teacher why do they have uh, to study uh, this uh, this uh, this Sunday school and why there too many homework. So what I heard is that uh, you have to uh, talk to explain it to them, maybe after class, you know, after class, talk to them by themselves, don't let other students hear from them because they might uh, feel uh, assisted. And also explain to them, and also you could ex uh, call their parents or or like before uh, class started, have to uh, uh, like see their parents and talk to them or explain it to the parents, but mainly like tell them after class, not during the class why it is important for you, why it's necessary for you to study the Sunday classes, you know, and why you got to know more about Jesus and, and what could help you grow in your life about learning more about um, the religious class with the Sunday classes. How it help you want to grow mentally and physically. Okay, yeah, that's oh, fine. that's awesome. Thank you for having me. Those are some great tips. Thank you. How about in the back, anybody want to share what we all discussed? What strategies stood out? What you plan to implement? Or if it's all of them, then all of them. Um, because I know we've had struggles. I know that we've had uh, maybe some behavior challenges. Anyone want to share anything? Follow <laughs> You want to share just what y'all discussed? Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Brian Hai. I'm uh, from the Andrews. Um, I have experience teaching the First Communion uh, years ago in, in the islands that I served. So uh, one of the strategies I use is I uh, say a little bit of a biblical story. And uh, uh, especially those uh, distracting kids I ask them to play a role in the story, uh, make them a part of the story, make them a part of my lessons. So, uh, and I used to name them the character, the biblical character. I named those kids with that name. And for the rest of the years, everybody in the class remember that character and remember who's played that character. And uh, it's a way that I used to uh, have the kids to remember, especially the biblical story and have them involved in the lessons as well. I'm teaching, but they, they teach one another. And uh, it's more encourage them to interact uh, with other people, especially when you 
you do this thing. So that is one of the difficulties that I see. also ideal, um, having your expectations, having your objective, um, and like I mentioned before, the, the curriculum already has it, you know, uh, who is God, that is going to be your uh, objective for that lesson, so you don't even have to come up with it, it's already there, um, so considering that, um, thank you all for sharing, any questions, any other comments? that we want to share. Um, I know with the, the um, title, it was a positive, positive environment. And I think we are a reflection of that positive environment of um, how your, your classroom is gonna flow. So implementing prayer is super ideal. I know that in some programs, we gather them together for like, a snack or dinner and I love that feeding them getting them snacks yes that will also motivate them um, but implementing a prayer at any chance I was speaking to uh, uh, friends from st. Christopher is if, if you do see that the kids are active for some reason it could be after Easter when they have all that candy you know so there's gonna be days when they're more active than than others is um, I, I used to do a little Christian aerobic song, three minutes. We would put it up and we would do the aerobics together. And it's a Christian song. So they, they loved it. And I wouldn't do it as a routine. I did it if we needed it because it, it was just kind of like, okay, let's, let's get up. And um, we could have done it today. But if you, if you think you, you can implement such things like that, that's always a, a good idea, okay? Anything else? No, no other questions, comments? Yes. Um, I don't mind speaking a little. Um, <clears throat> so I guess this has brought. I think maybe this is something a little more modern um, um, kind of problem in that um, now um, I kind of I, I spoke to a, a clinical psych psychologist for you um, in terms of uh, the best incentives for um, inside the classroom, and I know in the past 
I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm probably one of the younger uh, people in here, but uh, in the past, I know a lot of times we're kind of very quick to giving uh, students candy and, and, and things like that as an incentive. Uh, but now moving forward, I know um, after speaking with this person uh, is that we might want to refrain from doing it because now with so many health problems moving forward, um, that child might have diabetes or something like that. And, and that we might not know, essentially, even if there's allergies or something like that, that um, it might push them over the edge. Um, and, and so, and so um, there's no way that we can ever really predict this. And, and there have been um, for a lot more instances um, um, in today's day and age with like the populations and so forth. And so, um, uh, one, one of the things um, that, that they, they kind of utilize now is essentially a lot more positive reinforcement and things that have a little more sentimental value. You know, um, I know, for example, one of our group members here went to uh, Lisbon Portugal for World Youth Day. And so uh, maybe we can start to, you know, maybe look around, see what souvenirs we can go and get it blessed by our, our Holy Father and things like that. Something that has a little more sentimental value. In it. And so um, maybe just, um, we're, we're putting a little more thought into, uh, into our, uh, our consensus, but at the same time, it might even be a gateway to allow us the opportunity to, to travel or something as well. <clears throat> so I think it's a lot of um, giving a little more meaning to what we do, uh, not just as catechists, but, but as catechists also. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up, Jimmy. Yes, um, incentives, getting creative, and also knowing allergies, knowing what you can and cannot give. That's a big thing. Um, when you're getting to know them, and they'll let you, you have to ask, are there any allergies? Because we don't want an episode there too. But yes, I would I would definitely stay away from sugar. I know my kids are active, so you give them sugar or any kind of chocolate and good luck. <laughs> so just uh, for example, like giving a Jolly, Jolly Ranger, uh, or could they be hacked, act like a hyper or Oh, it's got to be chocolate to make them more uh, high. Any sugar, I would oh, really? say. They have a sugar, sugar hyper Any sugar. I thought it's only chocolate, not hyper. Oh, no. Anything has <laughs> sugar. <laughs>
they would work for movie night at home. So if they did, okay, today was good, tomorrow was good. And if they didn't, you know, uh, if they were getting the kid, another friend, then that week, uh, no movie or, or screen time. So you have to get creative with those ideas, okay? Anybody else? There, we, um, and sorry I didn't implement this in the beginning. I didn't know we were gonna take attendance. Otherwise, I would have told you in the beginning. But attendance was coming around, and uh, hopefully everybody filled it out as a blue paper. Did we all fill it out? Yes, right here? Because um, they just told us right now. So before you leave, fill that out, okay? Thank you, I enjoyed having you.